Welcome to Trillions. I'm Joel Weber. I'm Eric Balchunas. This episode is going to be a fun one. We're big on metaphors. If you've listened to Trillions at all, you know that we bring them into basically every single episode. And this episode is no exception. It's going to be one big metaphor. Metaphors are good. As an analyst, especially dealing with all kinds of investors, metaphors help to make something complicated and boring in some cases much more interesting and simple. And so we've used many metaphors, the food store, the car. This one's a little closer to home for me personally. And it's so good that we had to consult our legal department first and we got their blessing. And if that doesn't whet your appetite, this will, which is this episode is going to be all about Radiohead and the ETF. So why Radiohead? There's a couple bands that I hear and sometimes get uh, ideas from. For some reason, both Billy Joel and Radiohead, their, their song titles speak to good financial advice, but Radiohead even more. And, you know, you look at back in the day when people found hidden messages in Led Zeppelin and the Beatles. I think it was more like satanic messages. I swear to you, I find hidden financial advice messages in Radiohead lyrics. <laughs> That's awesome. It is, I probably just listened to too much Radiohead, and I'm just like, it's yeah, too much. You think about two things, basically, Radiohead and ETF. So but when it you would start be scribbling it out, it, 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 there's something there. Hmm. Well, joining us this episode will also be Rachel Evans, a reporter with Bloomberg News, who covers ETFs. And Rachel is a bit of an ETF head and Radiohead as well. So this one's going to get, we're going to get, this is going to just be awesome. This could be too much. It could be too much, but buckle your seatbelts. This episode, Radiohead teaches you how to be a good ETF investor. Hi, Rachel. Hey, Joel. How's it going? Good. Thanks for coming on the show. Delighted. So we know that Eric loves Radiohead, and we're going to get there. But I want to hear from you. What was your first Radiohead experience? So Radiohead for me began in my uh, teen years growing up just outside Oxford, which is obviously where Radiohead is from. So you're like literally, you're like from there. For on the doorstep, I can hear I it in say. your voice. On yeah. the doorstep. So my first experience with Radiohead live was going to see them when I was 15 years old. They did a homecoming gig in South Park, uh, just outside Oxford, um, and they had bands all afternoon. And Radiohead was the headliner at the end of the night. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Uh, it started to rain as they sort of started playing their final set. Everybody was kind of dancing around in the mud. It was fantastic. And, and their last song of the night was "Creep," which they'd said they'd never play again. It was incredible. And, and then your dad picked you up and took you home. My dad, yeah, exactly <laughs> awesome. that. My dad came and picked, picked me up, picked me up with my uh, my three other friends who were all a bit uh, underage drinking yeah, uh, around uh, then. Uh, <laughs> busted. <laughs> all these busted years later, busted. Back. Just drinking. Eric, your first Radiohead experience. Mine, and this is going to age me, I'm not going to say how old I was. Well, I guess I, I, mean, I was in college. We're going to find out. You're going to figure it out. But yeah. I was in college and Radiohead played at the Rutgers. I was, went to Rutgers. They played at the Student Center. This is off of their first album, Pablo Honey. And they opened for Belly. I don't know if you remember Belly. They were a pretty good band, but they're you know long forgotten. But they opened that that show, and uh, you know you, I went for both really. But then I saw them again on the Benz tour in San Francisco when I went out there on a bit of an excursion in life, and I saw them in a really small bar, about three four hundred people, and that was the Benz, and that that's when I got really hooked in. And I saw them a couple times uh, since then on different tours, and I saw them around the time Rachel saw them. That was the sort of Post OK Computer, just pre Kid A. Yeah, which is, that was their Kid prime. Territory, yeah. That was the best Radiohead, I think. And so, for both of you, what makes Radiohead so special? To me, it was the fact that they kind of spoke to my inner angst at a time, you know, when you're, you're struggling with all these feelings and you can't really express them because, you know, you don't have the emotional language to do so. And Radiohead kind of came in there at that point and they had this kind of viscerality with their lyrics. They were able to sort of describe feeling sort of blue and this world that you didn't really understand and this kind of like sort of almost post-apocalyptic imagery at times. Yet at the same time, I found them very uplifting. There was something so cathartic about actually sticking on the Benz or OK Computer or even Kid A, turning it up, uh, you know, whether you're in your car or in, in, your, in your bedroom, and then sort of listening to this music kind of take you to a place where actually things were better. Yeah, I, that actually speaks to me because I first listened to Radiohead in 1997, I guess. Somebody passed me headphones, which says, A, saying something, they were like literally over your ear headphones, in a study hall, and played the Benz, and Fake Plastic Trees came on, and I was like... I've never heard anything like this before. And it just really took me away. They also, they slip in weird chords. His falsetto voice, which I think he got from Jeff Buckley, but 
to apply that to the sort of uh, sound of the times uh, with some a lot of minor chords, it just worked well. And I agree, it's it makes you feel a little less alone in the world, but at the same time, it's uplifting and it's also very artistic. The uh, the stuff he describes uh, and the way it's the sound, you, you get a it's like a movie in your head. It's very very visual, and I, I just all aspects of it are great. So let's bring it back to the ETF, Rachel. When we came to you and said we're going to do this episode. And kind of told you about the idea of the hidden financial meetings within the lyrics. Had you ever thought about that before? I wouldn't say that I had necessarily. So, so for me, the thing with Radiohead that, that has always been an interest is they're very anti-capitalist in nature. Like when you listen to their lyrics and when you think about kind of you know, the imagery that they use along with their albums, a lot of it is quite anti-business. It's questioning the power that corporations have over us. It's looking at impact on climate change. All, all of that. Just your stuff. average ETF investor, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So, so I was like, oh, huh, interesting. But then like I started listening to the lyrics and, and that's what kind of really got me because actually one of the great things about Radiohead that I've always loved about them is that whilst their imagery is very dense and you can interpret it in, in many different ways, and one of those ways is indeed to think about it from the perspective of advice for investing. And I think this speaks to why it works is because they, you know, they went to art school in Oxford. They right. were going to be painters, but they were like, we can't make a living there, so we'll get together and do music. And so their stuff is abstract. And just like looking at a painting that is not uh, crystal clear what it is, people can draw different things. And I think that speaks to not that they're writing about investing, but that you could interpret many things from their lyrics. Hey, Joel here. Now that I'm the editor of Bloomberg Business Week, I pulled a few strings for our loyal podcast listeners. Go to businessweekmag.com slash trillions right now for a 30-day free trial. If you like what we're doing here on Trillions, you're going to love the stories that we publish in Bloomberg Business Week. Here's that special offer one more time. Go to businessweekmag.com slash trillions for your free 30-day trial. Thanks. Okay, so let's just go straight into it because we get to listen to some Radiohead. Okay, Rachel, what song are we going to listen to first? We've got Anyone Can Play Guitar from Radiohead's Pablo Honey. When I get to heaven, anyone can play guitar, be okay, so why did you pick that song? So, I mean, this song really shows you kind of like anyone can play guitar, you can pick up, you know, your axe and off you go, you're off to the races, you can be in a band, right? That's what Radiohead was kind of saying with this. But the same really applies for, for ETFs. You can, you know, go on your, your brokerage account, you can go to your advisor, you, anyone can buy an ETF. They're a very, very accessible product. They're at fees that anybody can really afford. Um, and you can kind of trade in and out of them when you want to. Anyone can do it. And there are several combinations, just like chords. There's different ways to do it. And it's a, like you said, it's, it's a, the guitar is interesting. It is a really accessible tool for that has really allowed a lot of people who wouldn't otherwise be in music to do music. The thing that, I, that stands out to me is that it's really not that complicated, right? And that's sort of like the simplicity of this is sort of ultimately an interesting place to start with. Okay, so so what's next? So next up, we have everything in its right place from their seminal album Kid A. I can actually see Tom York singing into a microphone right there. Like yeah, can you see his dancing image. as well? Yeah, yeah. All, all of the above. Excellent. How about the leap from anyone can play guitar to that? Yeah, that's right. uh, it's only ten years. Right, a little bit jarring, perhaps, but <laughs> say bad. And so, Eric, what, what do you like about that song? Well, first of all, the sound is just you, you know you just you stops you. But the reason I thought this was a good one to pick was this is asset allocation in a nutshell, and that also is part of the accessibility. You know, you have stocks, you have bonds. It's not that difficult, and it's like a pie, right? So what percentages do you want of each asset class? You plug in the ETF, and that's ultimately everything in its right place. So I think it speaks to asset allocation, and they've done studies that your decision on what percentages to put in those of asset classes it has much more determinant on your returns than the securities you select within the mm -hmm. asset class. So mm -hmm. it's huge. Right. Good advice from Tom York. 
Excellent advice from Tom York. Next one up, we've got Airbag from OK Computer. What are the lyrics there that resonate with you? So, so Tom talks about um, Tom York, obviously, to his friends, Radio Head's lead singer. Uh, talk- I love, just Tom. Tom, Tommy boy. Yep. Um, I'm fine with that. Yeah, Tommy Y, as we call him in my household. Uh, so he talks about um, how last night an airbag saved my life. And he's talking about this jackknife juggernaut, to where, which you know, presumably some kind of vehicle, who's, which is sort of turned over on the road, and how he's kind of born again and saved by this airbag. Now, this applies to ETFs, because to Eric's point about uh, asset allocation, you need to be thinking about your portfolio in terms of risk and reward, right? You don't want to be all in in, in risky um, ETFs. You want to have some kind of airbag there that's a protective uh, element. So that might be looking at kind of a, a treasuries ETF, for example, a way to kind of like put your money to work while still having something that's, that's pretty safe. The other thing I like about this is that we're jumping around in time, right? Like we're covering so many different albums here. Yeah, we're not going in chrono. That's, that's what makes it cool. This is not chronological order. It's financial advice order. It's a bit like high fidelity, right? Even when, yes. you, when you see this uh, is the financial John mix. Cusack like, yes. rearranging his CDs by like order of his life. God, that's this a good movie. It. So this grouping, though, was loosely, this is not that complicated, right? Pretty much. What's our next grouping going to be? Good so, behavior. So good behavior. Why is that a relevant topic in this conversation? Well, that was half of our episode with Betterment. Behavior... If you behave badly, it doesn't matter that you save all this money on lower costs or you get less capital gains. You can really destroy a lot of gains if you make bad decisions and uh, market time. And So behavior is really a huge deal. Which is a unique aspect of the ETF because there's part of it that also sort of can encourage bad behavior because it's so easy to use. Exactly. This is more applicable to ETFs than any other type of structure because they are so convenient. You can get in and out whenever you want. So behavior is even more important with ETFs. Okay. So first song in our good behavior section. Optimistic from Kid A. Did you pick this one or did Rachel pick this one? I did because... Why'd you pick it? I'm on Twitter a lot and there's these people called perma bears and and they get a lot of airtime on television because calling the next sort of crisis... Remember, Michael Lewis made all the uh, people who call the financial crisis into like superheroes. So everybody's trying to call the next downturn. And ultimately, if you listen to them, especially over the last eight years, you would have definitely done worse than just doing nothing. And so optimism is huge. And I find that the best investors are the most optimistic, the ones who stick to their plan, believe in it, and get rid of the noise. Next up. Next. Little by Little from The King of Limbs, one of their more recent albums. So this is kind of a parable in like how to think about uh, your ETF returns. Now you don't want to think about you know sort of getting a hundred percent necessarily in a year in terms of your returns. You need to be thinking about this slowly compounding um, you know, amount of money kind of coming into your ETFs, gradually going up and gradually returning you the big bucks. Whatever the index gives you. Right. That's what that's what an ETF does. Well, that's what a traditional passive index tracking ETF does. So you don't want to be thinking about like that. This is not about, you know, getting rich quick. This is about investing for the long term. And little by little, that should pay off. Basically the opposite of Bitcoin investors. <laughs> right. OK. Uh, what, I, what I also liked about that one was like that's the most recent Radiohead song, I think, on our list. Right. Yeah. This was from King of Limbs, which was uh I wouldn't put this in their like top echelon. I put them in the middle level in terms of the, how good they were, but there's some gems on there. Uh, Lotus Flower in particular is as good as anything they've done. Which also leads me to a question that I haven't asked either of you yet. How many times do you think you've seen Radiohead live? Probably eight. Over or under? 
Under, sadly. Under. I'm, I'm at three. Though, I do have with me today my T-shirt from my first ever gig, which I am going to actually, as I'm a bit hot already, take off, take off now. So <laughs> That's can... amazing. <laughs> I love that she's like, this is great. I love, hey, this. I, I love the enthusiasm. Oh, I she's gonna actually going to, nice. there it is. Oh, South Park. I have the same wow. one. This one. Um, like whatever. Wow. Yes. That's this, awesome. this, this is this is yeah, it's a play on here. that monkey one where the, the where they have the the no eyes no mouth yeah right except it's like modern day Gen X you don't have to cover it. your mouth I got it you have to talk talking to the microphone <laughs> well I, I I know I could explain things to you so I was <laughs> given the visuals to help help it go faster so how many t- concert T-shirts do you still have I probably have oh I probably have two yeah over the years I probably bought four but I have a, a framed poster. In my office area yeah. uh, that I really uh, kept, but a lot of a lot of the stuff I bought has kind of come and go. You've liked Radiohead for such a long time. I have to ask, do you still have a cassette? No, but I have CDs. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. I have a couple CDs, and I, I of course you do. Yeah, yeah. I have some cassettes. Like, oh! we used to make mixtapes for the car, and then inflict oh! it on my family. Yeah. So like we would all get in there, and you know I'd have like a little remix from the Benz. How did your Kine. How did your parents feel about your Radiohead? So my my dad's obsession. pretty cool. My dad was all right. He was obviously came and picked me up from the mm-hmm. concert. So yeah, he was he was with it. Uh, my mum not such a big fan. My brother yeah wasn't into it. I think he was more kind of getting into sort of the the pop yeah, side so the, of things at the time. Those uh, those cassette mixes were not so highly prized on the on those family road trips huh? highly prized by me but no one else okay last song in the good behavior section we've got i might be wrong from amnesiac What album was that from? Amnesiac. So they, they recorded two albums at the same time back in 2000, 2001. Kind of a, a first part became Kid A, second was Amnesiac. And I still remember going down to the shops the day that Amnesiac was released. I got a lift from school with my friend's mum. Brilliant. If you were in the US, I would have seen you at the record store. Yeah. <laughs> Amnesiac was my Bloomberg terminal password for like, oh, the really? first five years mm. I was here. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Then that I was is like phenomenal. Amnesiac 1, Amnesiac 2. Then I started using my kids' names. Yeah. Because okay. that's like more normal. So now we know how to hack into yeah. your, your email. <laughs> well, Change there's numbers password. now. They make you do capitals. Yeah, yeah I won't yeah. tell you those. Oh, Amnesiac. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay. And why do we pick I Might Be Wrong? So this one, I think, speaks to behavior because if you have your the plain vanilla core, and we talked about just hanging in there little by little. But let's face it, people like to speculate. That's okay. You know, it's okay to take some money and bet on something you think might go up. So take something like Russia Small Caps or uh, Palladium, you know, something that's a little out there, high flyer. Sometimes these do not work out. You think they should work. Uh, Uranium is a good example. That one has a great story, but it always goes down. It just goes down and down and down. You can cut your losses, okay? It's okay to admit you're wrong, because a lot of people lose extra money by thinking that it's going to turn around, and it, and it never does. And one uh, metric people use a lot for this is the 200 moving day average. So mm. if the price of the ETF falls below its 200 moving day average, that's known as the death cross. And a lot of times people will look at that as the time to get out. Like it's just going to get worse from there. So it's okay. You don't need to like marry every idea you have for like a good trade. The death cross almost sounds like a Radiohead song. <laughs> They, they're probably working on something with that end title right now. <laughs> yeah, or an album even. Okay, so that grouping was good behavior. The opposite of good behavior is bad behavior. And we also have some songs that we picked for that. The first one being... Just from the Benz, one of my favorite songs. You do it to yourself, you do. They're teaching some personal responsibility here. They are, yeah. So the song itself uh, sort of deals with a rather unfortunate relationship going bad. But in terms of personal investing advice, I think there's some really interesting takeaways, right? I mean, if you look at the financial crisis, one of the things that the people lamented after everything soured was, oh, I didn't know. Now, 
There is a lot of responsibility that advisors and sellers of products have to make sure that you have the information. You should be able, you shouldn't be being missold something. You should know what it is. But when it comes to ETFs, there's so much information in the public domain. You, as an investor, have to take responsibility for what you own and to go and read the prospectus of what you're buying. To take one example, you could look at kind of emerging market equity ETFs, for example. Um, Some of these are hedged, some of them aren't. You need to know that. Some of them hedge all of the currencies within them. Some of them hedge some of the currencies and optimise that hedge. Now, unless you actually read the small print, you don't know that. And if you don't know that, you could get burnt when something bad happens in the markets. I'd riff off of this with our next one, which is which is fake plastic trees. Same concept here, which is... And same album. Same album. Yeah, the Benz. And look, there's a lot of things that look pretty good. I mean, the, either the, the name is very nice, like kind of the cereal aisle, the cartoon character on front. But there is a lot of things that you don't need. There's a lot of noise out there. And I think that sort of speaks to that. The green plastic watering can For a fake Chinese rubber God, that's soothing. Eric, put your lighter away. Okay. Rachel, what do you like about that song? I mean, that song to me has always been one of the finest Radiohead songs. I think lyrically, it's fantastic. It's musically beautiful and haunting. Um, And yeah, it it builds to a really kind of great finale where you can kind of like pretty much scream it loud. And yeah, it's it's great. (laughs) It does the business. Yeah, that one is just top of my list. Although, the bins is funny. It's all about bad behavior. And yet, it's it's like the best album, as, as Eric will probably back me up on i think you know they wrote it when they were 27 let's face it I, we were all doing bad things at age 27 uh, you and go. you're kind of fighting yourself at that age and so i think they 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 kind of settled down had kids so their, their music became more about judge, you know, looking at the outside world but the bends i think was very much about stuff going on in like their life and trying to get your act together yeah i agree like their first couple of albums are kind of very personal they feel like they're, they're dealing with their own personal demons and then as they kind of move out they start looking at consumerism commercialism all that kind of stuff and, and thinking about climate change and the like next track next track also sticking with the bends we have high and dry Kill yourself. Okay, lyrics in there. (laughs) Two jumps in a week. I bet you think that's pretty clever, don't you, boy? So to me, obviously thinking with an investing hat on, this is about the perils of trading too frequently. So basically what you want to be thinking about when you're trading is not really trading. Like You only want to be moving in and out of an ETF if you're changing strategy, if if there's a really profound reason for moving. If if you're jumping in and out twice in a week, like the the song talks about, then all you're doing is racking up costs. It costs money to trade. um, So you don't want to be doing that too frequently. You know, I think trading isn't the, the worst thing in the world, but f- for, save that for the institutions and the professionals. But even them, there's been some evidence that it's it's tough for them because the more costs – again, you know, the more you trade, it's sort of like the, you know, the casino. Uh, if you go and the more you gamble, the more likely the house will win. So I think that uh, definitely speaks to that as well. I'll throw one other quickie in here on this whole behavior is where I end and you begin – which is kind of a creepy song. It's, it's good, though. I think it's about his father, but I don't know. I can't confirm that. Too abstract, but I think it is. There are some products out there that retail investors probably should just have like a hard stop, don't touch. And I would put VIX products in there. I'd put oil, anything that holds futures, oil futures, anything that uses derivatives, and leverage ETFs. And I think that's uh, good just to have a hard rule on that. Uh, they're like power tools. Vroom, you know, vroom. Oh, you'd love your sound I, effects. Vroom, <laughs> why, why wouldn't I? Vroom. You should have been in police academy. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, like when you think about leveraged uh, ETFs, I mean, these are very much intended for, for traders, right? They're not intended for, for retail. And sure, I mean, you can be well educated about how they work, but you, you've really got to sort of understand. And, and I think for the vast majority of people that, that own them, they, they don't and they get hammered by the roll costs. The same could be said for, for some of these kind of more um, sort of faddish thematic uh, ETFs. Uh, not to name names or anything per se, but uh, I think there's a few out there that perhaps are trying to to jump on the bandwagon of something that's you know been been in the, the news or, or seems to be popular, um, and that perhaps you know there's not really a compelling investing argument to be in them. Okay, so let's listen to that. Okay, so this is a pretty epic back of t-shirt set list that we've just kind of rolled through. Dude, they put the cities on the back, not the songs, oh, but that's okay. I'm, I'm putting the songs on okay. this one. This is your shirt. Yeah, my shirt, my rules. What is somebody going to get out of all of this advice about how to use ETFs more effectively? It comes back to the whole thing we talked about, about riding capitalism's coattails. Why are you doing this? Why are we here? I'm, I'm still pondering it ever since we, you asked it the first time. Don't go that deep with that. Let's go second level second deep, level yeah, deep? not third. Okay. The reason is because you want to retire. You want to send your kids to college. Just basic stuff, right? Mm. So all of this is so you can do that. And if you get you know a little wealthy along the way, that's, that's a bonus. Rachel, there's a song that I know you want to include to kind of help us sign off on this idea. Which one is that? How I Made My Millions. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so we've got How I Made My Millions. Now, Joel, you're crying. Bawling over here. Why do I, why do I listen to that? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's really amazing. It's beautiful. But we're not done. Because you can't end on that note. No. Yeah, that's a little... Even for my Radiohead standards, that's a little low. So chin up here, because 2 plus 2 equals 5? Sure does. Are you such a dreamer to put the Q plus two equals five gets to the power of compounding interest. There you go. I mean, it, it is, you know, that there's always that peop, the people talking about if you bought such and such at, you know, $10,000, it really is true. If you can just get in and just hang in there, I mean, that stuff compounds. And just get in, right? Just get a, get a, get a hook in there. Yeah. Just do something. That's why, um, and this song, it's, it's interesting. This is a Orwellian uh, phrase from the book 1984. And it was really about brainwashing. And we're turning it into a positive about compounding interest with ETFs. So that's a bit of a stretch, but I think it works. It's the power of Radiohead. You can apply it to anything. Okay, closing question. Rachel, you probably know this by now. We like to ask people what their favorite ETF ticker is. However, I'm going to change the rules slightly and ask you a hypothetical. What do you think Tom York's favorite ETF is? So I had a good long think about this. Um, and the conclusion that I came up with for, for what Tom's favorite ETF was, given that this is... Tommy the, Y. Tommy Y, our good friend. Given that this is 20 years since OK Computer came out, I thought he might quite like Robo. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. Robo, man, everybody loves Robo. Paranoid Android, that, that is, oh, yeah. yeah. Robotics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's a good one. That's more creative than mine. Mine's probably a little too yeah, what obvious. Do you, what do you think Tom's would be? I would go with the Climate Leadership ETF, yeah. ETHO, yeah. which is all about climate change. That was my other choice. Companies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's Tom York in a nutshell. Climate yeah. change and like computer robots. Rachel Evans, 
with Bloomberg News. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so we reached out to Radiohead because we just we had just done this episode and we were just like, we have to hear what they have to say about this. So it was like almost Eric's dream. He got to email the band and here's what they had to say. I did, but you're not giving me credit for finding the email of the manager. <laughs> there, I had to go yep. to some serious chat rooms in blogs that only fans like me would know. But anyway, I got it. So I emailed the band's manager, Chris Hufford. He Here's what he says back to me. Thanks for the email, Eric, but I'm afraid none of the band are available. Best, mm. Chris. Mm. So That's at okay. least it got back to me. And respect. I, respect. Props to Radiohead. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Trillions. Until next time, you can find us on the Bloomberg Terminal, Bloomberg.com, Apple Podcasts, and probably a bunch of other places I haven't heard of yet. We'd love to hear from you. We're on Twitter. I'm at Joel Weber Show. He's at Eric Balchunas. And our guest, Rachel Evans, is at Rachel Evans underscore NY. Trillions is produced by Jordan Bell with help from Magnus Henriksen. Francesca Levy is the head of Bloomberg Podcasts. Bye.